I want the viewer to become part of what they're viewing. I want them to feel that they're there looking at this subject and it becomes part of them. So there's a connection that I want to make with the viewer and the subjects that I'm portraying. By doing that, then it actually becomes a part of their emotion and in their sense of what this really means. Well, I grew up in North Hollywood, uh, California, in, in the shadows of the uh, movie companies. And uh, I, I really enjoyed watching the art that was in the movies at that time. And I think that really got me started. Well, I've actually been painting for about 54 years with the work that I'm doing right now. Uh, when I was a youngster, I would draw and sketch, but uh, as far as actually doing uh, oils, it's been about 54 years. Well, I've done over 150 paintings. I lost track of all of those that I gave away, but uh, Right now in, in my portfolio, I've got over 100, 100 paintings that I've done when I really concentrated and started doing the uh, art as a career. Mel portrays a variety of scenes from figures, landscapes and architecture to seascapes and portraits. His works are the result of making a composition from several views of his subjects and putting all the pieces together to form a symmetrical image of what each painting portrays. I, I really haven't zeroed in on one particular style or, uh, or a concentration, if you want to call it that. I enjoy doing all aspects of my art, from uh, architectural paintings, uh, landscapes, figures. I've done portraits, still life, and uh, wildlife. And it depends on the subject at the time. Uh, Right now I've done a lot of uh, figures because they're close to home. I've uh, used as my subjects some of my grandchildren. And so that's really what I'm doing right at the moment is, is uh, doing more figures than landscapes. Well, most successful artists want to leave a legacy of their work when they pass on. And I, I I want to be successful in the same way in that what I accomplish as an artist, I would like to leave for my posterity. And uh, so I concentrate on improving my work. Every time I do a painting, I want to make sure that I'm improving what I'm doing so that I can have that kind of legacy to leave. The driving force of most truly successful artists is to leave behind them a body of work that will contain lasting quality. Mel is no exception. His goal is to constantly improve his quality so that each painting will have an emotional impact on the viewer. Well, my studio isn't very big. Before I, we came back and I really concentrated on what I'm doing right now, I had the, the dining room of my home as my studio because it had the best light in the building, but uh, there was too many interruptions. It was a place of traffic and it would, it would cause interruptions. So I went downstairs and uh, there's a, a nice small room between two bedrooms downstairs that has good light. And uh, so that's my studio. It looks a little cluttered because I don't have very much space. But for me, it's, it's working out very well. It's, it's home, I put on my my 1950s and 60s music, and uh, both classical as well as uh, jazz and, and others. And uh, sometimes I'm find, finding that I'm painting to the beat of the, the music, which is good, and I enjoy that. So my studio is very small, but it, it tells a big story about what I'm doing. I think there has to be emotion involved. Uh, it's a spiritual thing, really. If you don't feel that, that the, it's the thing that you're going to accomplish, that you want to accomplish, then it's not worth doing. 
However, sometimes you, uh, I'll start out with something that I think really is going to be a good painting, a really good subject. Then I get into it and I don't have the same feeling. So I start all over. I may use the same canvas and paint over it, uh, or I'll just abandon it and go to something else. But, but that, uh, that feeling of connection between the work and the artist is very, very important. Well, I have several favorites. I have a favorite in, in my figures and portraits. I have a, a favorite, my favorite landscape. And architectural uh, painting. It just depends. I, I wouldn't uh, say that they're my only favorites. Uh, one in particular that a lot of people have copies of is the Savior holding a lamb. That one's pretty close. We went on a tour of Jerusalem and Israel and uh, I got to see some of the sites that uh, that uh, Christ had uh, been at and uh, where he had walked and that really gave me a sense of a need to do that painting. I tried to uh, capture him in the actual area with the heat and what he would be enduring at the time. So I, I, it's not a formal painting of the Savior as uh, he's often portrayed, but this is where he's maybe sweating a little bit, his hair's messed up, and he's close to the, to the lamb that he's holding. I, I did one portrait of a great grandmother and all I had was a very small black and white photo of her uh, in with several other people. And so again, I did some research and uh, came, with some, came up with some other photos. The person who wanted the piece done said, I'd like to have her about 40 years old. Well, I had one of her at 16 and one when she was an elderly lady. So as we were working on the piece, I would go to the, the individual and say, what do you think about this? Is this close to what you think she would be at that age? And then I would get some criticisms and then we'd make some changes. And finally, the final subject was a 40-year-old great-grandmother that filled the bill. Mel Gordon's home in Orem, Utah, is his own personal gallery as well as a studio. As you walk through, you will see his art hanging all around the house. He enjoys having people see what he is doing. Mel has had a one-man show in Japan as well as several here in the United States. In May 2006, at the Cardinal Art Gallery in Raleigh, North Carolina, in March 2008 and 2009, at the Chef's Table Restaurant in Orem, Utah. In addition to oils on canvas, he also has a collection of graphite sketches on paper. To view a cross-section of his work, go to www.melgordonartworks.com.